Over the last several weeks, I keep up with negative interest rates around the globe, and many firms do good research on this. What particularly piqued my interest was a Barclays piece, which pointed out that negative interest rates, which peaked around 2016, let's call it a little over 12 trillion, have made a resurgence over the last two months. They've gone up nearly two trillion since early October, and this data ended in early December. So seven and three quarters trillion from five and three quarters trillion. Jim, in a risk off mode, what does this tell us and what does it mean at a time where central banks are scrambling to normalize and some are thinking recession may be coming? Well, it, it, I think it tells you the, the degree of, of confidence in the institution of central banking and of fiat currencies that people are willing to invest knowing that they will lose money on a promise to pay. Uh, it's, 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 you know, you know what is an interesting coincidence, Rick, is that the, the, the 7.7 .7 or 7.6 trillion in negative yielding bonds almost exactly yields, equals the above ground dollar value of gold bullion. Now gold out yields, another way of looking at it, gold out yields 7.7 .7 or so trillion of paper claims um, and yet the stewards of those claims are happy to own the thing that yields less than the legacy form of money. I find it quite striking. No, that is quite striking. A sterile commodity doing better than a fixed income product. That truly is amazing. Now, I you read your most you recent fixed letter. Income, did you? <laughs> I read your most recent letter, and it was a bit depressing, Jim. You're basically saying that you know, for, ninety for percent who? of the assets around the globe. Well, that's ninety percent of the assets around the globe lately are, are pricing negative, and you haven't seen that confluence of, of percentages but maybe one or two times in the last hundred years. Equate that with the negative interest rate story. Do we see something rhyming there? Well, you know, it was Deutsche Bank that, uh, that observes that 90% uh, of the asset classes that monitors have delivered today, this is through mid-November, negative return, so uh, who knows where it is now. But what is so, to me, uh, so interesting and, and provocative about this information is that uh, uh, 90% is, is far and away the highest since 1901 when somebody started, you know, uh, collating this stuff. Uh, the runner-up to this year was 1920. Now, in 1920, there was a depression that rivaled uh, for intensity the opening acts of the Great Depression. So, uh, you know, I, I think what we are seeing in this 90%, what we are seeing is the evil fruit of the manipulation of interest rates by the world's central banks. You have had 10 years of uh, manipulation of the most critical price in capitals, and that's at a rate, basic rate of interest. Um, and it has distorted uh, very nearly everything that is traded. Well, if that's the case, we almost are out of time, Jim. I guess my final question is, uh, do you still stick with the tried and true investments that equities outperform in the long run, or do we need to tweak the entire model? Well, there's uh, a very interesting new study by a, uh, an emeritus professor, uh, Professor Macquarie. And uh, Professor Macquarie uh, observes that if you go back and look at the actual price data, which have been assembled by, among others, Richard Silla, the great financial historian at NYU, what you find is that the, uh, the, uh, the, the storyline of, of inevitable and perpetual outperformance of equities over a long investment period is, is in actually not reliable. 